This video is the third in a series of four videos on Oracle Pass for SaaS offerings. The Oracle Cloud Platform enables you to digitize your enterprise by focusing on analyze, extend, connect, and secure. For connect, Oracle Integration Cloud simplifies connecting applications together with pre-built integration flows and application connectors. Let's take a look and see how this works in Oracle Cloud. Oracle Integration Cloud eliminates and automates the mundane business processes while also empowering business users with the pre-built Oracle Manage adapters that easily connect your SaaS applications to your additional cloud or on-prem applications. In the next demo that we'll be showcasing, I'll be showing you the drag and drop interface of OIC, which helps eliminate the coding and connectivity barriers. We're also going to show you how Oracle Integrations uses the embedded business logic to um, set certain thresholds for auto-improving sales orders, uh, much of which is one of the key differentiators that Oracle Integrations can bring to you. The first persona that we're going to be identifying in the demo is our customer. He's going to be logging on to the custom platform that Vision has made using Oracle Integrations to put in an order form. With the custom business logic capabilities um, set within Oracle Integration, Vision Financial Controller um, will potentially have to approve or reject the order that hasn't already been pre-approved based off the embedded business thresholds. Once that order is approved, it's going to be sent into the ERP system and saved into the autonomous data warehouse, which is going to hold the data for long-term retention and analytic purposes. We're going to kick off the demonstration by showing you the application and how it works from end to end. Second, we're going to show you how we put the applications together and connected them um, in the last part of the demonstration. So starting off, uh, we're brought to the order form that Vision has put together for the customer. And the customer is going to input the values needed to put in the order form. He's going to make an order for 50 Vario tablets. And this comes to a total price of $15,000. Once he presses submit, there's going to be all the business logic validations that are going to be working in the back end. And this is going to determine if the order is going to be sent directly to the ERP system or if it's going to need some additional um, input from the financial controller themselves. Again, the business logic is one of the key features and differentiators of Oracle integrations. Um, that was very helpful for the company. So because the thresholds for the business logic is to send orders below 10,000 directly into the ERP system, this is going to require the financial controller to step in and look at the order themselves. And so on the home screen of the ERP environment, the financial manager has to go to order management. By clicking on this, he is able to see um, all the different orders within his task list. He sees the order that was just created and he's going to approve it. There's no comments that he wants to make, so he's just going to press OK. And he sees that the status report says that it's been successfully sent over to the ERP. He's gonna go back to his home screen, go back into order management. And now he wants to look at all the managed orders that he has um, been manually approving or rejecting. By going to task and the manage order section, you can see um, that the first line indicates that his, um, that the report has been successfully generated into the ERP system and he knows that it's been created and retained into the autonomous data warehouse. And that's the application from end to end. Now we're gonna move on to the second portion of this demonstration where we walk you through how we create the um, integrations and connect the applications together. So here you can see this is the home screen of your Oracle integration cloud console. And you're able to choose um, process automations, integrations, or visual builder to help you create your integrations. Starting off with the integrations tab, 
this gives you all the different um, options for creating uh, your connections. And to create that, it just takes two simple steps. The first is creating the connection. So this is going to have you choose what connector you want to use. And the second part is creating the integration flow and the mapping of your data from endpoint to endpoint. So going to the connection tab, we click on create and you're going to see all the different connectors that have been provided and created by the Oracle uh, development team. They're all managed by Oracle development. And so you don't have to worry about handling the APIs yourself. So this cuts down drastically on the time spent on developing these. And we also provide you some of the best in class third party adapters to really make your connections as seamless as possible. So once you created your connection, you are going to go into um, the one that you just created and fill out additional information. So what's needed is the URL endpoint. So this is going to point to your ERP environment. And you're also going to include the credentials for logging into your ERP system. So those are the three main steps that go into connecting. You're going to test it to make sure that the connection is successful. You're going to save it, and then you can move on to the next part, which is the integration flow. The next step in the process is designing the integration flow. Integration can start off from either a business event or be triggered from an action or a schedule within your application. As you can see here, Oracle integration provides you with this low code design time environment that allows you to easily just place connections in the order that you want your data to flow in. If you also want to take a deeper dive into your request and response time structures, you can do so. This lets you easily map the data and how it's transformed from one application to the next without even having to really worry about these structures that I've put in place. This drastically reduces the time spent on developing the integrations as just one of the additional key differentiators that Oracle integration can provide to you. And once you're done with placing all your conditions into the integration flow and you're happy with the way that the data is being mapped into it, you can easily just turn on your integration um, and then test it out and it will be ready to use. The next part of our demo is going to be looking at the monitoring dashboard. The monitoring dashboard is going to help us um, take a look into all the integrations that we've built on Oracle integrations and we're provided visuals and metrics that tell us the success rate of these integrations and other metrics like the daily usage of them. As you can see, this dashboard provides us a very um, intuitive look into how our integrations are working and we can add in more visuals and metrics to our liking by just simply downloading them onto the dashboard page. And the final step of this demonstration is going to be um, tracking an integration and so with this, we're able to see exactly how our data is moving from one point to the next and if there's any failures going on in between that. So we're going to click onto um, the instance that we had just created and we can look into the activity stream. As this loads, you're going to see um, the mapping of the integration. And once we click on view activity stream, we're populated a message board that tells us um, with a timestamp exactly what's occurring at every time and at which date and how the data is flowing. If there's a failure message, we're able to then export that, that error message over to our development team and let them know that um, there's an error occurring at a certain point within our integration. And this allows us to collaborate more effectively and make sure that we're going to find a solution in a very timely manner. So that concludes the end of the demonstration for Oracle Integrations Cloud. Um, I really hope that I've been able to give you a very strong overview of the power of Oracle Integrations Cloud as I showed you how seamless it is when connecting one application to the next and how easy it is by just utilizing the drag and drop interface of Oracle Integrations Cloud and really taking advantage of those embedded business logic that really cuts down some of the manual processes that we're used to doing on a day-to-day -day basis. 
Oracle Pass for SaaS offerings allow easy adaptation to the continuously changing business landscapes. You can subscribe to any of these offerings at your pace, use what you need, and when you need it. To learn more, please watch additional videos in this Pass for SaaS series.